We're here in Snohomish, Washington for stop three in the Spartan U.S. National Series. Eight miles and 30 obstacles, and at the end, one man and one woman will be crowned champion of the battle in Seattle. Thank you for joining us. I'm David Megiddo along with Kevin Donahue. And Kevin, we've seen this shift from, from the southeast into the Pacific Northwest. And how is that going to impact today's race? I mean, look at this rain. Look at this cold. This is perfect Northwest weather, but it is going to wreak havoc on all the athletes in their hands today. We've seen two different winners in the first two races, and Ryan Atkins sitting in second in both of those races. What do you expect to see? Well, VJ Jones is back here to wreck the points for everybody, and Ryan Kent won this course last year. He's back the whole serve, and it's going to be a factor. Well, Nicole Merkel has been dominant thus far this season, including over two-time defending champion Lindsey Webster. So what do you expect to see from her? Nicole has been dominant, and this is her kind of course, but there is a tremendous amount of pressure on her to beat Lindsay, because with the mountains coming up, Lindsay Webster knows that she could win today. That puts a tremendous amount of pressure on everybody else, and she could take the whole series. The terrain and the climate is going to be a major factor in today's race, and more with that is the third member of our team, Steve Hammond. Well, a very good morning from a wet and soggy Seattle. It is freezing here, guys. The rain is pouring down, and it is about 45 degrees. We've got dunk wall nice and early on in the course, and a really nice hilly start. It's going to be very interesting how the athletes are going to handle these conditions with being cold and with some water obstacles early on. The grip strength is going to be a factor. I'm very excited to see how it unfolds. See you out there, guys. Thanks so much, Steve. And of course, the weather, the climate, the terrain, a huge factor today as we go into today's race. And what do you think, Kev? Steve was not kidding. As we look at this gauntlet key coming up, once the athletes hit that rolling mud and dunk wall, their hands are going to start the process of freezing. And when that happens, it's going to make obstacles that some of these men and other and the ladies, like Z walls and a spear throw, it's going to make them so much more difficult than they normally are. There's no question that gauntlet is going to be where things shake out, but don't be surprised if they start failing obstacles such as monkey bars and twister as well with the wet grips that they're going to have out there. But first, a word from our sponsor. Welcome to beautiful, rugged Snohomish County, Washington, or better known as Seattle's backcountry. It's hard to believe that this outdoor recreation paradise is only minutes away from downtown Seattle. Snohomish County is home to some of the Pacific Northwest's best kayaking, whitewater rafting, wakeboarding, kite surfing, rock climbing, bouldering, and mountain biking. This outdoor adventurer's dream is the perfect training grounds for Spartan champions. Speaking of Spartan champions, there's a number of them up there today. The men to watch, of course, Ryan Atkins, VJ Jones, and Ryan Kent. There are so many great athletes out there today. One of those great athletes out there is Ryan Woods. Now, Ryan Woods is nursing a hamstring injury that he, that he did in training a couple days ago. So we're going to see if he's going to be able to run today as well as he can. And the athletes are off. Look for a few men to try and take this field out fast to blow this field up. B.J. Jones, after that dominant win in Alabama, is going to look to assert himself early on in this race. And Ryan Atkins knows that if he can take the win today, he's going to put himself in a position where no one should be able to catch him as we move into the mountains. It's going to be really tough. And as we're moving up this hill, this is Aaron Newell here, who is an outstanding rock climber and really good in the cold. This young man got stuck in the woods at age 17 and knows a lot of things about cold weather and having to stay out there all overnight. But as the athletes are coming up the hill, let's see if he has the gas to keep it up. So that you can see up in the front, Tyler Veerman, Ryan Kent, VJ Jones, Ryan Kempson, a lot of the big names. Um, the question, of course, will Ryan Woods have anything in the hamstring to be able to hold on for this entire race or not? The first couple miles are really going to tell the story. And if you could look there in the green jacket, that is Ryan Kempson, and he is our series leader. Kempson has had an impressive year, especially with these two flat courses that have been in the southeast. It's been warm, really quick footing. Now the terrain is getting a little uglier. It's not just wet and mushy, but we're talking about hard, difficult, undulating terrain that's tough on the ankles, tough on the hips. And he's had so many hip problems in the past, he's going to have to work very hard to keep himself stable in this race. Yeah, this is going to be one of those interesting courses where even the descents are these really divided, muddy, uh, quick coming down the hills, but when they get to these cornfields that are out there, it's almost like tractors have been going out there, and there's these huge divots and ditches that are running diagonally through the course, and they're covered up by grass, so these athletes could be sprinting as fast as they can, and the next thing you know, their leg is going to dip down two feet to a ditch, so it's going to be very, very difficult to maintain a rhythm for the whole race. Not, not the same speed courses that we had before, so we're moving gradually toward those mountain races that we'll have towards the end of the series, and this is the first real 
strength running test. And speaking of strength runners, that's Ryan Atkins out in front, probably the best in the entire field on technical terrain. Yeah, and as you see, VJ Jones is right there and Ryan Kent's moving up as well as Ryan Kemp's. And this is truly the cream of the crop that's starting to establish themselves a little bit early. Granted, there is a lot of racing to go, but these are some of the big names that we knew would be coming out here and hopefully, you know, we see these guys in the same places at the finish line. And that's Aaron Newell staying up there with them. Other faces to watch, of course, in today's race could be Johnny Luna Lima. We've seen him so close to putting it all together, and he's got a lot of that running talent. Look for him to be more dangerous as we move into the hills and the mountains. But this is stage one for an opportunity for a guy like him. Yeah, I tell you what, if you're not familiar with Johnny Luna Lima, he was actually... Luma Lina, I should say, I'm sorry. He is a tremendous athlete. He was on the U.S. National Developmental Soccer Team. So this is a guy that, you know, if you think about soccer, he has tremendous footwork, tremendous agility. So of a course like this, with all the undulating training we just talked about, could work in well into his, uh, ta his talents. So right now the terrain is relatively gentle, a little bit of rolling hills. You had that one big kicker in the beginning of the race. There'll be one more large climb before we hit the bucket carry, of course. And, uh, as we hit the trails in the woods, I think this thing will spread out a little bit. You'll see a, a lead group form and a couple chase groups. Yeah, and at the, right now this is positioning into that bucket. Because when they get into the bucket, that's when they'll be able to loop back and forth and actually kind of see where people are positioned. They'll be able to judge things like how the other athletes are breathing how much effort they're putting in. And that'll be a kind of a telltale sign for what the athletes are feeling and whether or not they could strike at that point as well. For those at home wondering, we have Ryan Atkins in first position, Ryan Kent in second, Ryan Kempson in third. You didn't mishear that. That is Ryan, Ryan, and Ryan in the top three with VJ Jones hot on their heels. And I think each man in that field is aware of how dangerous he is. Yeah, Ryan Kent's in the black shirt with the big ponytail on top of his head. Kempson is in the green jacket. Atkins with the long black tights leaving the course right now. And uh, we're not sure who that man in the black shirt is, but we'll try to find out. Well, there's no question when you look at how sloppy this terrain is, the rain coming down, you're going to have some issues with visibility. Those of you at home know that going in, but we have a heck of a race laid out for you. And VJ Jones has just popped into the screen. He's going to make a move. We're going to see how his season has gone thus far. The young kid from California, he has managed to reel off a win in every single race that he has competed in. Ladies and gents, VJ Jones, way out in front, and does he look tired at all to you? No, he looks absolutely calm. After a 12th place finish in Lake Tahoe last year, it seems that VJ Jones has rededicated himself. <laughs> I tell you what, look at the way that he's raced so far this season. First, 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 but he beats uh, Hobie Call and Cody Moat. Uh, he is in fine form. And DJ Jones, the young kid, hmm. 20 years old. That was, uh, that was a cool confidence booster. Looking to get some more wins this year and really climb the ranks. And... When you consider the talent in this field, they now have another man to fear, and that's VJ Jones. VJ is actually undefeated so far on the season. He didn't race in Jacksonville. He felt a little under the weather and didn't end up making the trip. This is oh, VJ yeah. Jones in first position at the Twister, and can you imagine doing it more effortlessly than that? 20 years old, carrying this bucket at a dead run. Stronger yes, than he looks. Oh, the finger point. <laughs> oh, I love it. He is laying it down. And this is VJ Jones, an emphatic oh. stamp as he comes over the fire and crosses the line. Tapping the timer. VJ Jones is your U.S. National Series Race 2 champ. Honestly, I was not expecting. Like, I felt confident, but I... have Honestly, I had no idea I was going to stack up against these guys. I haven't raced any of them. And back here in the race, you can see that Ryan Atkins and Ryan Kent going at it with Ryan Kempson right behind. And we know VJ isn't far off. And there's a little bit of a changing of the guard that's happened in the, the circuit this year. I, I tell you what, VJ, we, you know, we talk about as being a young kid, but he's turning into a man. He's filling into a very big frame and becoming a big, strong guy, and it's really starting to show on the course. And as you can see, the course right now, it is muddy. And it's muddy for a reason, Dave. It's pouring rain out there. It's uh, also very cold. It started raining at about 7 a.m. this morning. It was dry through the evening before that, but the temperature has also dropped about 8 degrees. We're looking at about 42, 43 degrees Fahrenheit and rain, and there's VJ popping onto the screen. 
his body is so efficient right now. There's just no wasted energy in his stride, but there's also just no extra wasted mass that he doesn't need to carry. He's very lean. He's very strong. I mean, he's not the kind of athlete you could call, like, uh, wiry anymore. He's just a big, strong man at this point in his career. So, as you can see, this, there's now a lead group that has separated from the rest of the field. There's a small gap developing. There may be a few guys close behind, but as these athletes make their way toward the Bucket Brigade, the first major heavy strength-oriented obstacle of the day, it should shake things up a little bit. And before they get there, they're going to be getting to the barbed wire crawl. It doesn't seem like it's much, but that's the first time they're actually going to have to put their hands in the mud. And like you said, with the temperature changing and getting colder, with the rain pouring down the way it is right now, and the conditions supposed to get worse if the day goes on, it's just going to make that so much harder when they get to the bucket. And that's Tyler Veerman, who's just moved into fifth position. He's having quite a year as well. Uh, really developed from a collegiate miler into an all-around, well-rounded athlete. Um, going back to what you said about the barbed wire crawl, one of the things that's interesting about it is how much energy it takes out of you, but also how it breaks your rhythm. Many of the things in Spartan Race are designed to do just that. Ian Hosick and a few of the others. John Penland and Jesse Machesi popping out of the woods. And as you can see, you know, you want to talk about rhythm breaking? Look at the trees. They just came bombing down a hill around a hairpin turn. And before they could even get their footing, they have to jump over these bushes and logs. So this terrain right now is already significantly different than what we've encountered in the first two races, which were a little flatter. If you did have soft earth, it was warmer, so hands weren't affected as much. Ankles and, and uh, peroneal muscles, lower leg muscles, they weren't working as hard. This is where things are going to start to become a little bit different as the series progresses. Now we're getting into the, that tougher, more technical trail running. Yeah, you talk about it's not even it's not even as much the physical stress as well as it is the mental stress of trying to hit these hairpin turns knowing that you might fall down, and if you do, your hands are getting in the mud and making all that stuff that much harder. I mean, look at the speed that Ryan Atkins is descending with. Probably the best technical descender in this field right now because I don't see Ryan Woods out there at all. He is quite a technical descender as well. He used to be a member of the U.S. National Mountain Running Team. And as you see him flying down, he's going to come around some hairpin turns that are total mud. I mean, this is muck. Right now, as the viewer is watching this, you can't get a true sense of how sloppy these conditions are, but they're nasty. I'd also like to point out that we have our rabbits out there on the course actually doing the filming for this race, and they are running step for step with these athletes right now. We've got some of the best mountain runners and ultra runners in the country manning these cameras for you for your entertainment. And they're just not manning it with the men, they are manning it with the women as well. So they're doing double the work of some of these athletes out here today. And this is the barbed wire crawl. Ryan Atkins first to arrive at the barbed wire crawl. Good at essentially every obstacle, he's just been so rock solid. But look at this for an opportunity for VJ or uh, Kempson to make a move because they're a little warm, slight yeah. of frame. Actually, yes, and as you can see right now, this is the first chance that they had to stick their hands in that muddy, mucky water. So already the freezing of the hands has begun. Ryan Atkins out first, but yes, hands are going to be affected early in this race, and one of the keys is going to be can they keep their hands warm? Can they maintain their dexterity over the course of this race? And as you see, Ryan stumbling right there. It just shows you here's one of the best trail runners in the world, and we're only about a mile and a half into this race, and he's already starting to trip over these clumps of grass. This is what we talked about when we mentioned this strength running that happens out here on this course. It's not going to be quite as swift, but you're working so hard to go step for step through all this undulating, uncomfortable, miserable terrain. It's not as fun to run on either. And as the, the lumpier and muddier and thicker this train gets, the more it favors a taller athlete who could stride through it with a little bit more ease. And up ahead, you can see it's Ryan Atkins one, VJ Jones in two. You're talking about the guys who went 2-1 in the last race. And Ryan Atkins has been second in the first two races of the series. You know he's looking for his first win of the year right now. It's so important for him to do well at this race because with the longer mountain races coming up, in the future, those are the ones he does very well at. So if he can establish some great points today by winning or coming in second again, it sets him up for possibly a U.S. Championship Series win. I spoke with Ryan just before this race, and he said he knows the stakes here. He's aware that if he can win this race, he can essentially lock up this series now. He believes that he's going to be so dominant in the mountains that he will take this thing in a walk-away victory if he can win today. 
That puts so much pressure on all the other athletes here. Speci specifically, Ryan Kempson, who's running there in the green. Ryan is the leader right now, but with those longer mountain races coming up next, he knows he has to chase horses like Ryan Atkins there. It's going to be really hard if he's doing it from a deficit. And Ryan Kempson, of course, he knows the stakes, but he still believes he's strong enough in the mountains to maintain his position and win this overall series. Of course, he's got the lead right now. To him, he's still the betting favorite. Oh, absolutely. Abs and he's running with more confidence and racing with more confidence than he ever has in his life after coming off a, a hip to a torn labrum in his hip that sidelined him for months. Speaking of confidence, that's your two-time defending world champion, Lindsey Webster, coming over the wall. Rose Wetzel. Rose Wetzel, local favorite. Local favorite and a mom. And her story is very well known in the obstacle course racing community. Suffered from postpartum depression. And she has come oh, back from having her first right child now, to be a threat Dallas. in this we championship series. Another Alyssa local, Holly. It's Alyssa Holly. And I would say for years has been one of the best pure obstaclers in the field. And she's transformed herself into a runner and now she's running with some of the best of them. But Ryan Atkins barreling down this hill, first place so far. And for those at home wondering, what am I seeing right now? A bunch of shirtless people running around through the woods. This is obstacle racing. It's freezing cold outside, 42 degrees, raining, and they're shirtless because it's actually warmer that way instead of something cold pressed up against your skin. Yeah, if you think, if you jumped in a freezing cold lake and then had to walk around with that t-shirt on all day, you would freeze. So what happens is these guys are able to air out their skin with no clothing on and it keeps them warmer throughout the race. And of course, you, there are some items of clothing that you could wear. You might see a couple of the athletes outfitted with some neoprene or something, but a lot of athletes don't want to carry something that's that heavy, that gets wet, that weighs them down, that can get snagged in the barbed wire that they're gonna be crawling through. So instead, shirtless we go, and you tough it out. And your body heat is gonna keep you warm because you're working so hard over the course of this race. It's also a rule that anything that they start with, any piece of clothing or equipment they carry at the beginning, they have to finish the entire course with it. So if they pick something that's a little too heavy, like that bucket they're picking up right now, they gotta carry it the whole course. And that is Nicole Miracle. Two races, two wins in the newest national series this year. And let's see exactly how she did it. I did not call the play. I came to dominate, dominate, dominate. I did not call the play. I came to dominate, dominate, dominate. For 2019, I'm I'm excited to hopefully start the season injury free, healthy. Nicole Marigold's running style really just reminds me of her personality relaxed. Is anyone gonna be able to run her down? Because she just keeps moving past the men's field like they're not even there. the spear but at that point um, I thought that Nell was fitter than me and so I thought if she doesn't feel anything she's probably going to beat me. Nell Rojas won the first race this year out in California beating Nicole Miracle. There we go. Women's race is off and going. Oh, look at the speed out the front. Nicole. Seven second gap right now. Nicole Miracle with the lead right now, and she looks incredibly comfortable. When you look at her, I see no fatigue on her in any way. <laughs> Translated to a 10 minute win. Look how easy she flips this Yokohama tire. Nicole Miracle is coming into the A frame cargo net, claiming 300 points in the 2019 U.S. National Series race one. And Nicole Miracle on the right, she won the race last week. Nicole Miracle is flying and out in front with wings on her feet and no one else in sight. She likes to come out fast, but she's proven that she can sustain it. Claiming her second win in the U.S. National Series in 2019, winning in Jacksonville, winning once again today in Alabama. This is Nicole Miracle. And the women's race is off, and if this race goes anything like the ones before, Nicole Miracle's gonna come out of the gates hot, and that is indeed her hitting the field hard right up the first climb. Yeah, it's almost tradition for Nicole Miracle to head out first in a race. And in that piece, it was a great example of the grip strength obstacles that are laying out in front of them for the rest of the race, as it's gonna require them to use those wet, cold, 
muddy, frozen hands to get through the course. Now, Nicole tends to have an advantage on a lot of these grip strength obstacles because she does so much rock climbing and she spends so much time working on that grip. But today you can see a lot of the female athletes are wearing gloves of some kinds on their hands. And that is because of major concern that they're not going to be able to have the dexterity that they typically have in these races because of the cold. Yeah. The athlete right there, that's actually Tia Reagan, as you can see, that on her hands are these mittens, they're neoprene. And what they do is even when the water gets in, it allows your body heat to heat up that water that hits the gloves and keep them warm for as long as they can. It's worth noting that if you bring an item onto the course for your use, anything, a glove, a shirt, whatever, you have to carry it for the entire race. And this is Ryan Kent making a huge move on the bucket and moving into first place. Yeah, Ryan Kent was fourth going to that bucket and caught up and actually passed Ryan Atkins towards the top of the last hill. And now Ryan Atkins start to blow past him. As we have Alyssa Hawley now taking it out. Alyssa was the 2017 winner of this race, beating Lindsey Webster towards the end of the race. It is one of the premier closers in this sport. Nicole Merkel, of course, right on that climb, moving right into the lead, asserting herself. Her objective is, of course, with the amount of confidence she's running with and knowing where her fitness is, she wants to blow the field up early and generate a gap. What she doesn't want is for Lindsey Webster to hang around and be nearby with an opportunity to close in the second half of this race. One of the interesting things about the sport, as now the men are hitting that rolling mud, the closer these athletes are together, the more pressure they put on each other to get the obstacle. That forces mistakes. Mistakes, of course, but also when you work with the other men around you, when you're in that frenzy, you can push your pace and separate from the rest of the field as well. So right now you have Ryan Atkins, Ryan Kent, and VJ Jones all coming through the dunk wall together with, it's freezing cold by the way. And, and they that's... had no opportunity to save their hands. They had to put them in the mud there. So they just came through that dunk wall in the water. And the first thing they had to do was stick their hands in the mud. They climb over this wall now and they still have muddy hands and they're going to start heading in to that Z wall pretty soon. That's going to require a tremendous amount of what you would call pinch grip strength. Yes, and, and we have a number of obstacles that are going to hit in sequence right there. So it's not just the Z wall. It's the Z wall followed by the pressure of the accuracy obstacle, the spear throw. This is part of what makes the sport great too as the ladies are jump, jumping over those walls. You just can't be a strong runner in this sport. Those walls and any obstacle you see breaks up your rhythm. So it, you have to have total body fitness to do well. Speaking of rhythm, VJ Jones has now moved into first position ahead of Ryan Atkins. And he looks at this as an opportunity right now. I got some flat ground. Let me open up. Let me generate some gap because I'm going to need it to hold off Ryan on some of these strength obstacles at the end of this race. That long stride is going to be very fortuitous to him today as they head over that inverted wall with absolute ease. Now they're coming into that very important Z wall, which is a wall that kind of looks like a lightning bolt. It goes in one direction, makes two 90 degree turns with wooden blocks that they have to grip with their hands. There's certain rules around that they can't grab the top, they can't grab the bottom, and their feet could never touch the ground. They're gonna cr cross over a little bridge now, and then they're gonna head into that, and it's gonna be the first obstacle that could cause a penalty for these athletes out here today. It's one of those obstacles that always just makes you a bit nervous. You know you can do it, you know you're good at it, but if the paint on that wood is a little bit slick with water, it can actually be a little tricky, and your feet can slip off considering how muddy they are. Yeah, it is. It, it could be daunting, and this is something that has to be in these athletes' heads already as they were coming out of that rolling mud, and now they're heading in. You'll be able to see a lot of these athletes now because the, the walls are cut out with these holes. And knowing that you have the spear throw right after it, of course, definitely messes with your mind because you're already so consumed with that one. As you can see, Nicole now running in that deep mud. And what puts these ladies at a disadvantage is a whole herd of men have already chopped through it. And as you see, VJ Jones and Ryan Kent must have failed it because they are now in the burpee pen. They're going to have to do 30 burpees before they can move on. And Ryan Atkins, you can see him raise arms celebrating as he just ran through. So Ryan Atkins now entered into that obstacle with the two other men and he exits alone heading into the spear throw obstacle. If he nails this spear throw, he's going to be way out in front all by himself. And that takes a load of 
pressure off of him. All he's got to do is hit this throw. As you can tell, he's loosening up his arm right now. He wants to take his time with this and make sure he hits it. Because if he does, he will have a huge lead as these men are have to bang out the burpees and it also fatigues them. So they're coming out here with so much more energy wasted. Penalty for any failed obstacle is 30 burpees. And 30 burpees is not just the time it takes, which for these guys is going to be anywhere between a minute 10 and a minute and a half, maybe a little bit more. It's the fatigue of probably slowing as a hit from Ryan Atkins. He doesn't have to worry about that fatigue from the burpees, which will slow an athlete by up to 45 seconds over the course of the next mile. They'll just be gassed out. He's going to run right into this tire flip, one flip out, one flip back, and then an opportunity to open up and run a little bit. I did not think the conditions of this race would tear this up so fast, but it just did. And now you have a guy with tremendous amount of grip strength being able to just rip that tire over, and he gets another flip, and he will be off and running as Ryan Kempson hit his spear and got the Z-wall, and now the series leader is right on Ryan Atkins in second place. So, Atkins, of course, in first, looking very smooth. Ryan Kempson popped into the screen. Moving into second has got to be thrilled about that because he was losing ground as they were making their way into the Z-Wall. I'm not sure if he's racing at 100% today or if he's holding back purposely, but Ryan Kempson put himself back in a position to maintain his lead on this series. As you can see here now, Lindsay Webster is in position now too as she's moved into second place right along Nicole Miracle. And that, of course, the stairway to spotter as the athletes come down. Ryan Atkins in first. Looking smooth, and now he knows the pressure's off a little bit. The key for him, of course, is going to be to avoid falling asleep out there when he has this solid lead. He's still got Ryan Kempson on his heels, and he can never count out athletes like Ryan Kent and B.J. Jones. So these series, they go by points. A win is worth 300 points. A second place is worth 264. A third is worth 240. So every single one of these places matters so much. So Brian Kempson being able to move up from fourth all the way into second is huge when it, you talk about the entire series as a whole. Right now, that was Johnny Luna Lima. You haven't heard his name too much today, but he's one of the athletes to watch. He is going to put a lot of pressure out on that leadership, on that leaderboard. We've gotten reports that we have Johnny Luna Lima and Tyler Veerman competing for that third place position right now. But it's Ryan Atkins in first place trying to take okay. the lead on the U.S. National Series. And it's Ryan Kempson on his heels coming into the Atlas Stone Carry trying to maintain his grasp of that series lead. And to let you know what the rules are for this, they have to pick up this very heavy Atlas Stone. It's in the mud. They have to get their hands underneath it, try to grip it, carry it across that span to the other flags, drop, do five burpees, and then repeat that as they bring it back. And then they're able to run away. So Ryan Atkins already with a five burpee lead over Ryan Kempson as we move into this field. You can see the strength that he has. He's just such a well-rounded athlete, not just his ability to run and his endurance and his threshold, but his pure strength, grip, and power are just superior. Yeah, and you know what? That doesn't look like an obstacle that's going to cause him that much trouble, but because they have to use so much bicep and back strength right there, that starts to fatigue these athletes as their course wears on and they get into these other grip strength obstacles such as a twister, a beater, and the monkey bars. So there's a moment of running that will open up for the men, as you can see the women's race. That's Rose Wetzel behind, followed by Rhea Koble. Rhea's going to try and make a statement today. She hasn't had her strongest series thus far. She's much better in the mountains. But this is her first taste of hills and ugly terrain and all the stuff that she likes to gobble up out there as she tries to track down some of these athletes that have gained some points on her so far. And this is an opportunity for a little bit of redemption for Rhea. This was a house of horrors for her last year. She did four penalty obstacles here last year and finished very poorly. It was very tough for her, so let's see if she could do better today. If you're not an endurance athlete or if you're new to endurance sports, Ryan Atkins, the leader right now, just ingested an energy gel, and he'll probably consume a couple over the course of the race. They're about 90 calories each, and they give you a little bit of energy, a little bit of fuel, just to give you that boost that you need over the course of a race. As we see that as Ray in the blue jacket, and she is right behind hometown hero Rose Wetzel. Out in front, Ryan Atkins making his way in towards Twister, I believe is next. And uh, with a sure-handed athlete like Ryan, you never expect a failure, but of course we don't expect to see guys like VJ and Ryan Kent falling off the Z-Wall. Anything can happen on a day that's slippery and wet and damp and cold. The cold can affect, affect the grip so dramatically it can change the race completely. Ryan Atkins continues 
just this dominant stretch run out in the front of the course as he works his way towards Twister. And on the back side of this course, coming up, you're going to get to see some of these athletes racing through not just technical running terrain, but deep, nasty water as well. And you can see him starting to warm up at that stride is lengthening out now. And he's starting to run with a lot more, a much faster cadence and a lot more rhythm. And Lindsay Webster has moved into first position. She loves these de technical, nasty descents. And they just passed the one mile mark. And the speed that these athletes are putting out is putting a lot of pressure on the rest of the field. Lindsay Webster and Ryan Atkins are a married couple. And it's no coincidence that they're both two of the best descenders on the planet. They spent a lot of time training together. But also, they just spend a lot of time on their feet in general. They're constantly working on their fitness in one way or another because they just live it. But VJ looks like he's back up and running and moving at tempo as he makes a pass over Johnny Luna Lima right there. It's incredible to see what we're just watching right now. VJ Jones did 30 gut-wrenching burpees, and he and Ryan Kent, who did him as well, are now back in the mix and have actually passed Johnny Luna Lima. And the women are now hitting the barbed wire crawl as well. Lindsey Webster still in first position. Nicole Merkel not scared at all. She makes a pass right here in the barbed wire. She's taking these opportunities to earn a few valuable seconds wherever she can find them. Nicole Miracle has those neoprene gloves on, which allowed her to put her hands in the mud and go a little bit faster. Lindsay had to crawl on her forearms because she didn't have those gloves and was trying to maintain her hand dexterity. One of the amazing things is how quick these athletes are getting back up to speed. At home, you may not realize how difficult it is to go from a crawl on the ground underneath 50 yards of wire into a dead run, but they managed to do it so effortlessly. And there's seven miles left in this course, so for them to have that quick a turnover that fast is really remarkable. And again, we're not talking about going out on a road and just throwing down eight miles of tempo running. This is extremely difficult terrain. It's wet, it's sticky, your feet just get sucked in. I nearly had my shoes pulled off running around out there earlier today as Ryan Atkins now in Twister. Twister is a, it's kind of a spiral. It almost looks like DNA with these metal handles. So those metal handles right now are sopping in that cold rain with the wind blowing. You have to navigate through that DNA structure all the way down and ring a bell on the other side. Every handle you grab will rotate. And so the next handle will then have to be higher up. You reach, you grab it, it rotates once again. And there are a number of different techniques that athletes are going to use to work their way through this obstacle. Some will move forward, some will move backwards, some will move sideways. And each way taxes your grip every time it twists down, just like you explained. And all tax it in a very different way. Each guy has something that they're comfortable with. Um, some, if you move backwards, is a more sure-handed technique, but it can be more taxing on your biceps, for example. And just think about it. When you're cold, the last thing you want to do is put your hands on cold, wet metal. So look at this. Two of the men right here have already done 30 burpees, and they've moved back into second and third position overall. Each one of them using, is using that backwards position. Usually you'll see VJ go forwards and kind of do an ape swing through. That was a very conservative technique he used. And there they go. Two men who did 30 burpees are now placing themselves back in the race. They did not quit. And you can see Johnny Luna Lima right here, great athlete, but a little bit more of a novice in the sport of obstacle racing. He only really started breaking out in this sport last year. And you can see the experience of a, oh, excuse me, that was Aaron Newell right there. But the experience of a VJ Jones, the experience of a Ryan Kent showing on that obstacle right there. And Aaron Newell's a outstanding rock climber. It was probably the only man today that you'd see go out there using that forward technique, which is the fastest, but it's probably the most difficult. And so Nicole Merkel now back in first position in the women's race. This is a steady climb. They barely look like they're working. They look so comfortable as they climb, but there's actually a very high speed to be working up that hill. When you spoke earlier in the race and you talked about Nicole wanting to send this out and blow athletes up, I think that's what she was thinking about when she hit the barbed wire. I have to make sure that I'm pushing Lindsay right now yeah. faster than she wants to go because she needs to wear her out now and that's exactly what she's trying to do. If she allows Lindsay to stay in her desired heart rate zone, Lindsay will run a muck in the second half of this race. She will tear this thing up. But if she can push Lindsay to the point of suffer early, she has a chance to break away. She also knows that that bucket carry coming up is very much in Lindsay's wheelhouse. So she has to make sure that she's pushing Lindsay as hard as she can into that bucket so her heart rate is so high that she can't do the bucket as fast as she likes to do normally. I'm just enjoying watching these ladies 
run through the woods, skipping over logs, skipping over rocks, winding back and forth. It really shows their true athleticism. Ryan Atkins, again, out in front. Lindsey Webster's husband, making it look easy out there in the course. And again, as we mentioned earlier, his big key is going to be with this lead that he's developed, not getting too comfortable, not falling asleep, so to speak, because the athletes behind him are all running off of adrenaline right now. They just failed obstacles. They're all nervous. And Ryan has had a little bit of that comfort zone of knowing he has that cushion. So to keep the pressure on will be key for him if he wants to maintain this lead. It's always incredibly stressful to be the hunted. You do not want to be the hunted. Sometimes that takes more energy out of you than you want as the ladies now are approaching the bucket. So this bucket carry for the women is going to be about 60, 65 pounds, and they're going to carry it down one descent, back up, and down a second descent before back up. So imagine walking with both hands full of groceries down a wet hill and trying not to spill everything. If they fall over and that bucket keels over and the rocks come out, they have to put them back in before they can go. And we've seen world champions in past years, such as Hobie Call, fall and dump all his rocks on this very same bucket carry. So it can happen, it's very difficult. And you're seeing women, these women now, the leaders, passing some of the men for the elite wave. The women start about 15 minutes behind. So over the course of the first two-ish miles of this race, they've already managed to reel in some of these men who started 15 minutes ahead. And that's Rhea Coble and Alyssa Hawley together, side by side, coming into this bucket carry. They're right where they want to be, only seconds behind the leaders. And just in front of them, we saw Rose Wetzel and Tia Reagan. Tia Reagan came out of nowhere in these last couple races. And people don't know too much about her. She's a, a former Texas cross country champion. She was also a professional wakeboarder. She is a complete athlete and they can do so many different things. And that's the kind of athletes you're getting in obstacle course racing now. They come from all walks of life, great runners, great athletes, they're strong, they can rock climb, they have agility, they have power. It takes an overall incredible athlete to do this sport and we're starting to see the diversity with some of the other things their backgrounds are coming from obstacle racing is that ultimate sport that levels the playing field between athletes from different modalities brings them all together and then you find out who the best true athlete is out there and right now it's one of these two ladies and they're walking you see how comfortably they're walking up this hill right now Lindsay's trying to put a little pressure on him she's trying to find a place where she could pass but unfortunately the the terrain on the right side was a little too muddy, but there she goes, she just got past her, and that's sending a message to Nicole. That's what Nicole did not want to happen. She did not want to get past on this bucket carry because now she's gonna to have to work again to get out, get out in front of her before that Z-wall and spear come up. And similar to what we talked about with the burpees affecting you over the course of the rest of the race, the bucket carry is an obstacle where you can overwork, and overworking on a bucket carry can result in taking your running legs away from you if you just don't have the ability to hammer on that course after you kill yourself on this bucket carry. And now this lead is starting to stretch out a few seconds longer for Lindsay Webster. She wants to do some damage here. She's looking to take 20 or 30 seconds. And if you notice Lindsay there for a second had to readjust that bucket. She worked really hard to get past Nicole, but it's starting to kind of tax her grip a little bit. You came up with a word for this. It's kind of called your support grip. Mm -hmm. And that support grip is something that they're gonna need later for a lot of these other obstacles. It seems like she had to adjust a little bit there. So it's already starting to go. Yeah, the support grip is gonna be huge as you work through this obstacle, as well as some of the other ones, including um, the rope climbs, the monkey bars, beaters, twister. You use it a lot where you're just locking that hand in that hooked position and holding on. And again, Ryan Atkins looking back, trying to figure out what his gap is. It's pretty big. Now they're to an obstacle called the Olympus. As you can see, the wind whipping. So that rain is right in their face. BJ Jones just hits the bell. That's such a hard obstacle to do when it's wet because when you put your feet on that wall, they just want to slide down. So it's really hard to keep that pressure. As we see Lindsay walking up the hill, Nicole, we just missed before that, I think almost dropped the bucket and had to stop and lost a big gap. Yeah, there is a definite gap forming between the two of them right now. And this is exactly what Lindsay wants. She wants to break Nicole's confidence as we move towards the later part of this race. And we have hometown hero number two, Alyssa Hawley, the 2017 Seattle champion, still staying, staying in this. She is so consistent, and she's, again, like Lindsay, one of the top closers in the sport. She could continue to chip away at this. Lindsay Webster has just wrapped up her first bucket carry, her only bucket carry of the day, and watch her descend down this hill. She knows 
Nicole is still carrying. Now is my chance to take first place and just stretch out that gap. And what that does too is when the Nicole now, for the first time in the U.S. National Series, is behind. She is not in the lead. So that's going to force a little bit more pressure on all these obstacles coming up. Also, we have, with Alyssa Hawley pushing, I believe Rose Wetzel right behind her, her objective is the same. I'm now trying to establish myself in third position and hold off these other women and create as much of a gap as possible, not just for the, the actual time, but to create that mental block in their heads and put a chip in their confidence. As you can see her running this fast, she's running through muddy, mucky water, and she's taking risks right there. She has no idea what's underneath those puddles. It could be a ditch. So it takes a lot of guts to run down a hill like that and into this terrain because you have no idea what lies underneath. And there go the hands. Now, rolling mud is not just difficult on the hands. It's the cold that impacts you from jumping into that water. It's the energy it takes to actually get out of these wet, nasty, mucky, mud pits that you have because it's actually pretty tough and it breaks your rhythm again we're talking about that rhythm and how important it is yeah if you've never done it think about again running down a wet muddy hill and then it's almost like doing sand dunes so if you've ever tried to run sand dunes at the beach how much energy that takes out of your legs because the ground gives that's exactly what the rolling mud does to you so Ryan Atkins out in first position. Ryan Kempson is in the chase right now looking to try and reel him back in and then there's a war right now for third position Ryan Kent, VJ Jones, and Johnny Luna Lima all battling for that third and final podium position, but don't count any of them out for still winning this thing overall as Ryan Kent makes his way over Bender. This is another obstacle. Again, it won't really trip up any of the athletes, but what he just had to do is use his upper body muscles and apply wet, cold hands to wet, cold metal. And Lindsey Webster, out in front looking to stretch this gap as she's approaching that obstacle gauntlet that we've been afraid of. We've seen the damage that it did in the men's field. Now the question is, which of these women is going to run a clean race with their wet and their muddy hands? And there go Alyssa Hawley's hands right into the mud. You could tell she wasn't able to save them. So that's going to be much, much more difficult for her going to that Z-Wall. There's one little advantage the ladies do have, though, when they get to the Z-Wall their hands are a little bit smaller. And sometimes it allows you to grip these things a little bit better. Plus, their body weight to strength ratio is different. They're not carrying like 190 pounds like a Ryan Kent is. So sometimes it makes it a little bit easier. Well, I don't know about easy, but they're certainly going to give it a go. Ryan Atkins out here in front. Look at the, the terrain that we see right now. All of these slants, these slits, these little crevasses in the terrain, it's everywhere throughout this entire eight mile course and it's almost like you're leapfrogging, lily pad topping from one to the next to avoid jumping into one of those holes. And we're, we have the advantage of seeing it through the camera. As they're running through it, they can't see how deep that grass goes when they go into those ditches. And as she works her way across the bridge, little does Lindsay Webster know just how slippery this Z wall is. Yeah, it's impossible for her to know that two of the top men failed it and it just wasn't the two top men there were so many other men that failed this obstacle today once she gets both hands and both feet on that wall she's established she's I committed and the thing is in her head she's already worried about the spear throw which has given her fits for so many years but she needs to maintain her focus on this obstacle because I think she knows by now exactly how slick it is. And one of the rules is you're actually able to use those upright posts, as you see she just hooked her arm around it, to get you around these blind corners. She's doing this as fast as anybody we've seen today so and far. A, uh, it's a good thing she nailed it. She's off and moving. What I didn't see yet is where Nicole Miracle is. She looks back. She's trying to figure that out as well. How did I create such a gap so far? As you could see, all the other athletes that had failed it in that burpee pen, they look like something out of Deadliest Catch, like a bunch of crabs in a cage. Now what you see right here is Ryan Kempson about to get gobbled up by the monster that is VJ Jones. And Kempson, with his running ability and what we've seen this year, this is the first time that we've witnessed somebody just track him down from 30 burpees behind. Oh, VJ is like a Spartan Sicario. He's a hitman without a conscience that is just trying to drag out and wreck the point system for all these other athletes. As Nicole has made her way to that Z-Wall, and the men are here in pipe layer. This is the first time we've seen this in a U.S. National Series race. Look how quick Kempson made his way through that. Being a little more slight of frame certainly helps over the taller, longer VJ. 
and as tall as VJ is, look at the agility and the mobility that he just showed to get there as quickly as he did. So this is the battle for second position right now, and somewhere back there battling for the next spot would be Ryan Kent and Johnny Luna Lima. Lindsay Webster flipping that Yokohama tire flip. It's about 200 pounds. She flips it with ease. 200 pounds dry. Don't forget it's been raining for a couple days here, so filled with water as well. A ton of water. And she made it through with absolutely, like, it looked like no effort. And the thing that you'll notice about her form when she's running as well as Nicole Miracles is how little effort it looks like they're putting in because they're so efficient and they maintain such a stoic facial expression as well. And there's something that Lindsay Webster that will do that other athletes sometimes are afraid of. When she gets a lead, she starts to gap it out and run even harder. Well, out in the lead right now is Ryan Atkins, but he better not get too comfortable because it looks like VJ Jones is coming up and coming up fast. He just nearly captured Ryan Kempson already. And this eight, race is only halfway done. And this eight foot box is a little bit awkward. It's a rope that goes over this box and it's hard to get up there. Once you grab that bar, he makes it over pretty easy. He made, he's a pro, he did that so much easier than a lot of other athletes because it really will slow them out, slow them down. So these athletes are actually at about mile five right now at the eight foot box and the women a little bit further behind, uh, probably around mile three as they make their way out of the major gauntlet area, major festival area. We know that right now Lindsay Webster is clean and as she looks back and you can see the bridge up there that she crossed over, no Nicole Miracle. None, and she looked back twice to see if she was there and still didn't see her as she looked over her shoulder again. And now she's back into the sloppier mud as she approaches that Atlas carry. Yeah, and, and for, for Lindsay, there's an opportunity here. Put your foot down. Put, it, put your foot on the gas, accelerate, and just leave the world behind. There's no reason to get comfortable now. This is that moment where you can really put your foot in the throat of your opponents. When she looked at this race, she couldn't be any more happy to be in first place in this third race of the series after having two first and second place finishes as Rose Wetzel just drilled her spear. Yeah, it's good to see Rose Wetzel back up in prime form, and she's running with some of the top ladies once again. Rose Wetzel came back again from having her first child. She was a star in the sport, had a baby, and has worked her way all the way back to being one of the most consistent women. As Lindsay Webster completes it, and off she goes again. Rose Wetzel was arguably one of the top two females in the sport for a couple years. And then uh, a couple injuries, the baby, a tough comeback. It's taken her a few years to really find her form, but she's found it this year with a podium finish in Jacksonville. And she's also probably one of the nicest people on the planet, so it's really easy to root for her. We all love her. But right now, this is the Lindsay Webster show. She's out there in front. She's trying to establish, don't forget about me. I am still the best female obstacle racer on this planet, and she's making a statement right now. And that is without question. I mean, there's some people in some other sports where you say they are arguably the best. She is hands down the best, as Ryan Kent is still hammering away, trying to make up the gap after failing that D wall, and he's on a mission right now. Ryan Kent, one of the sturdier built athletes in the field, was actually a collegiate conference champion steeplechaser uh, in college, and he's managed to transform himself into one of the most well-rounded athletes out there. And the thing about him is he doesn't always look as smooth, and yet he's just constantly hammering out a consistent tempo. He's so good at that. And he is one of the strongest athletes on the world on those heavy carries. Very powerful. Yeah, and he had the fastest bucket carry today of the top men, no question. Ryan Atkins also had a quality bucket carry. This is him right now in the back end of the course, working his way through some of the water, and it's going to get deep back there. And we see that stream at a certain point. It's going to drop right. down to about chest level, and that is going to be impossible for them to be able to save their hands in that cold water to, for coming up to all these grip strength obstacles later on. How smooth all these athletes look as you got a glimpse of Rand Coble briefly exiting the festival area and heading out to the back half of this course. This, of course, one of the toughest sections technically to run. It's just gritty and nasty back here. It's choose your own adventure. I mean, this is like looking at something out of a swamp down in Louisiana, but here we are in the Northwest and it is cold and it is cranky. Now again, we have rabbits chasing these guys. So as terrible as this stuff is to run through and Ryan is, is devouring this, uh, we have Guys running with cameras behind him. So uh, definitely our hats off to them for the effort. Ryan is just barreling through this stuff. 
barreling through there, bare-chested, I mean, the scrapes that you're going to get from this, the amount of contact it's going to get on your skin, you truly have to be willing to sacrifice your body to run through this kind of vegetation and not worry about it. This is not just a speed and endurance and strength sport. It is a sport about grit and toughness. And you're getting a taste of it right here. Some of these things are a little thorny as well. It's not going to be a pleasant trip every time you go out there. No, you need to go buy a tube, a huge tub of ointment for your skin after this because it is going to be a rough night sleeping. And as Ryan makes his way away from the riverbed, I think we got some more deep water coming. Here we go. Let's see if this drops down. So Ryan still, Atkins out in front. We know that in the hunt, Ryan Kempson and VJ Jones are still looking to try and pull him back in. VJ cannot win the series because he missed the first race of the U.S. National Series, but he is looking to mess things up for everybody. He has been public about that. Oh, he and he already has, and he makes no you know bones about it. He's actually proud to do it, and that's just the kind of, uh, people might think that's cocky, people might think it's arrogant, but he's actually one of the more endearing people you'd ever want to meet in the sport, but he is as competitive as they come, as Johnny Lumalina just hit it and passes Ryan Kempson. And you can see up in the distance just ahead, that was VJ Jones. He's already made the move. I saw his back as he disappeared into the woods. You can see him crossing the river in the distance. He's already made the move past, and to see Kempson get tracked down by Luna Lima as well is not a good sign for him today. That is not, and there's still so many obstacles that could cause burpees in the, after this, so it's going to be uh, interesting to see how he gets through that. It's Rhea running really well for someone who did 120 burpees last year. That means she failed four obstacles. For her to be running this well and that far up right now is really something to see. There's VJ. He's made his way back onto the trails, out of the riverbeds, and now the hunt is on. He's looking pretty smooth, and... He thinks he's got a shot to win this still. If he can manage to track Ryan Atkins down after 30 burpees, that tells you something about his fitness. And it's not like Ryan Atkins is running slow. You saw the effort he was putting through as Lindsey Webster using one of the techniques that the men generally use. Reverse technique. Backwards on the twister. It takes a tremendous amount of strength in the core just to keep you from twisting off as you use it. She needs to reach and hit that bell. Got it. And Lindsay Webster's nailed it. She's off and running. Now, this was an obstacle that gives a lot of the women a little concern. There's a spill from Ryan Kent. He's back up and moving. It's, it's a little nasty out there today. Lindsay Webster now made it through one of the more dangerous obstacles. She's out there with a chance to just run away with this thing today. That was one of those big grip strength obstacles that she had to get through because knowing Nicole Miracle, who's a great climber and has great grip strength behind her, if she would have faltered and fell off there, it could have been an opportunity for Nicole to catch her. We know how nasty this course is gonna get for her as she moves into those riverbeds. So there's nothing as secure yet. You can't get comfortable there. It's easy for that to really take your speed and take your legs trudging through that deep water. It's so hard to run as fast as you can when you can't see anyone around you. It's actually pretty spooky. They could be, it's because there's so much woods here and there's so much water, you could be, you know, a few feet behind somebody and not even hear them or see them because it's so hard to differentiate what's behind you. So they need to run as hard as they can, and we're t when I say they, Lindsay and Ryan, to make sure they're still creating that gap. Otherwise, you're going to get caught. If you're just joining us, you're looking at Rhea Coble. This is race three of the Spartan U.S. National Series from Snohomish, Washington. The athletes have been out in the course for between four and six miles at this point, depending on the women or the men. The women started about 15 minutes behind the men, and we've got a battle brewing up there. That looks like Rhea Coble chasing uh, Rose Wetzel. She is. She is after Rose Wetzel again, the hometown girl. And Rhea Coble, who's had her struggles here, is not backing down. Now, Rose and Rhea are both making their way up toward the twister obstacle that Lindsey Webster just completed. And we know that Nicole Miracle is up ahead as well. <laughs> this is a big opportunity for each of them to take a little pass at the other one because this obstacle does have a fairly high fail rate in conditions like this. Rhea Coble was an Olympic hopeful for Team Slovenia when she was a child. She's a tremendous upper body athlete. And Rose Wetzel has done a lot of like kind of ninja competitions and stuff like that. So those are two athletes that should be really good at an obstacle cold twister. And again, the class of the race today is Lindsay Webster out in front, just dominating almost a mirror image of the race her husband is throwing down right now in the men's field. 
and you can kind of get a scale of how fast she's running as she's just blowing past some of the other men that were in earlier in the elite field. This looks like Ryan Kent making his way over the top of the ladder wall and off and moving. This is a big moment right here. She, I think you can see off in the corner right there, that was Alyssa Hawley doing burpees. So Alyssa Hawley, who was in third position, it looks like she's about to lose that position to Rose Wetzel and Rhea Coleman. Rhea Coleman just made a tactical decision to take the gloves off so she get a little more dexterity on here. And there they both go. You see Rose moving forward, Rhea Rose, moving backwards. Rose and falls Rose down. is down. Rose Wetzel's gonna have to do her burpees and she's gonna have to do them fast. This just spared Alyssa Hawley an entire position. Rhea completes the obstacle. Rose started going backwards, lost her grip, spun around in a 360 and could not recover. So right now, what you're seeing is Rose Wetzel trying to knock out 30 burpees, make her way back into this race, but it's not looking good for her today. This is not what she needed. No, what they do is they drop their headband, which has their race number on it. The official walks over, takes that number, shows it to a camera. These burpees will be judged and counted later. Any missed burpee or incorrect burpee will cost them 30 seconds of penalty time. An athlete must get their full chest to the ground, hands up overhead, jump at the top of that burpee. All of those are essential in the burpee rep count. So um, anything less, they can be penalized per burpees. They can even be DQ'd for missing enough. And this is beater. This obstacle is almost like monkey bars, except there's rotation to it. Ryan Kent making it look easy. They call it beater because it's kind of like an egg beater. They grab that bar, and that whole trussing system spins as they come down. That spin just wants to make, it creates more force, and it wants to pull your hands right off the bar. And like you said, he did it with ease. And so when you think about the grip already, the cold, wet, thick metal, so it's a wide grip for your hand, which is tough already, then you add the slick terrain, the cold, uh, it becomes a more failable obstacle. Some of these guys, they're so good at this obstacle already, they don't even worry about it. And then you have a little slick conditions, all of a sudden it throws a wrench in all your plans. Yeah, if you want to make this, if you want to kind of get an idea of how to do that at home and, and simulate it, stick your hand in a really cold bucket of water for about two or three minutes, and then try to just go onto a playground monkey bar and see how hard it is. And again, there's Ryan Kempson trying to pull himself back together, trying to maintain his lead in the U.S. National Series. A first place finish in Jacksonville, a third place finish in race two in Alabama. And right now he is on the ropes. Ryan Atkins, who finished second in both of those races, is trying to establish a gap and steal the lead in this series. And why it's so important for him to still push is there's Ryan Kent hammering away. Even if he finishes, say, like in fourth or fifth, they still acquire very valuable points over the course of a series. What if somebody in front of them fails an obstacle and they're able to overtake them? So it's so important that even if they're not in the lead, that they continue to push hard for the entire duration of the race. And Ryan Kent is chasing Ryan Kempson right now, trying to establish trying to gain those points because really right now the two of them if there's a flip-flop in this race they're going to be separated by a very small gap in the overall series and ryan kent lost incredibly valuable points in the last race because in the last obstacle the a-frame cargo he got beat by robert killian who's no longer in the series because he missed today's race but stole valuable points from kent making every single obstacle now. That That's more true. Lindsay Webster has just made her way all the way through Olympus with no trouble at all, off and running. And this is Faye Stenning. Faye Stenning who missed the spear earlier. That's why she's sitting all the way back here. And one of the top females in the sport has come as, has finished as high as second in the series in the series a couple years ago, trying to find her legs this year. Yeah, as you see Johnny Lumelina hammering down this trail. Faye was in first place in this race very late last year until she failed Can off. you believe this? This is VJ Jones already all the way back with Ryan Atkins, and we are only about a mile from the finish line, and they are hitting the monkey bars almost step for step. VJ Jones has done 30 burpees and come all the way back to a dead race with Ryan Atkins. This is an unprecedented comeback on an athlete of Atkins caliber for VJ to do this. And they are just flying through these monkey bars that have huge gaps and just made it through with ease. We got a race on our hands. Well, it looks like Ryan Atkins has woke up. I think he was lulled to sleep a little bit by that big lead. He is awake and ready. And VJ, who had that big adrenaline burst, I think he's about to get another one knowing he just caught one of the fastest men in the world. And with only a few obstacles left, this race is coming down to the wire. To be young and naive, 
just do dirty burpees, run someone down, and then have the guts to just go straight at one of the top men of the world. I'd call it young and fearless. Maybe, <laughs> maybe too young to know that he's not supposed to be able to do this, but right now, it's only a few seconds separating them, and what they have coming up is a little bit of trail running, some nasty stuff in the backwoods, and then the sandbag carry, the rope climb, the Hercules hoist, the multi-rig. These are big time gap obstacles, opportunities to stretch out a lead, as Ryan Kempson is working to try and get himself back into this race. He's currently in fourth position. Johnny Luna, Luma, Luna Lima is sitting in third. Can you believe an opportunity right here for Luna Lima to steal a podium position? And here's Ryan Kempson, now with pressure. He has to move through this quickly, and he needs to run down Johnny Luna Lima. Those points are important. He needs them for his series right here. And, and Ryan Kempson has just fallen off the monkey bars. The slick reverse grip did not help him, and he is in big trouble, not just for today, but for his series as a whole. He came in with the lead with a first and third place finish, and this is not good for him a mile from the finish line. And you heard the grunt of disbelief as now Ryan Kent has now had an opportunity, gives him a quick look, and he knows he just found new life. Well, here's new life. VJ Jones has new life. He's come all the way back in this race from down 30 whole burpees to Ryan Atkins to running side by side with him about a mile from the finish line. And now VJ could do something he hasn't been able to do since it's the very second mile of the race, and that is push the pace and push the tempo. Now this terrain back here, it's difficult to push the pace on. You can see their feet have just slipped right into this muck, this mud. It's nasty stuff out there, and it's difficult to run through. It's very draining, and they're about to hit some climbs here on the back end of the course. It's gonna get ugly. They're about to hit a very steep, muddy climb, and then they have to go into a very heavy sandbag carry. Oh, it's the best, and Ryan Atkins, I know, is licking his chops over the sandbag carry. I wouldn't sleep on VJ Jones, though. He has put on so much strength in the last couple of years. I think this is something that he relishes now. And what a challenge for somebody, a 21-year-old athlete, to be able to go up one of the top men in the world in such a huge series race. I think Lindsey Webster is committed to not letting what happened to Ryan Atkins happen to her. She is not going to let Nicole Miracle run herself back into this race. And she's putting down a tempo right now that's enviable to pretty much anyone out there on the course. Yeah. It's safe to say that um, Nicole Miracle is trying to win the series in this race as Rose Wetzel powers over that wall. That is eight feet high and took a tremendous amount of upper body And strength. here's the first big kicker that we're talking about. This is a nasty little hill. It's slick. The leaves mixed with the soft earth make it very difficult to generate the power to get up this thing. And you're going to see some power hiking on this back section of the course. And what Ryan Atkins did right there was very telling. He did not want... VJ Jones to get in front of him because now he can control the tempo going up the hill and not allow VJ to pass him and set the tempo himself. Very strategic move by a very, very cagey veteran. Yeah, very savvy vet. He's been a world champion in other sports as well, including mountain biking, and he's also a fantastic rock climber. It's gonna pay, uh, it's gonna be a huge benefit for him, a huge plus for him, the experience factor, but VJ even at 20 years old, certainly no rookie. Yeah, VJ right now, you see him trying to pick around him, and every time he does, Ryan Atkins steps in front of his path and turns him down. Out here on the course, very, very tight race in the men's field. The women's race, though, Lindsay Webster is determined to capture as many of these men as she can as she stretches her lead out over Nicole Miracle on the rest of the women's field. And as much as he stretches that lead out there, it's also the strategic advantage of knowing if I fail an obstacle, I can recover. But there also comes fear with that as well. Looks like Faye Stenning and Rose Wetzel on this obstacle simultaneously. The Olympus working their way laterally. And if you're, working, if you're watching what Faye was doing, she was pushing her knees into that wall, trying to get as much perpendicular pressure as possible to save her arm so it doesn't have to be just that as Rose Wetzel is using a very similar technique. It's very slick today. It's tough to get your feet to hold you up on that wall when we talk about the concept of uh, heels are grippy, toes are slippy, but it doesn't even apply today because everything is slippy today. And the more time you spend on this obstacle, the more it exhausts you for obstacles later. So this could hurt Rose later and possibly force a burpee later on on an obstacle that requires the same amount of strength because she's draining it right now. Being deliberate can be helpful in terms of preventing failure, but it can also lead to exhaustion that leads to failure later. So Rose Wetzel trying to keep herself back into this race, and we have a battle for third position right now because this is Johnny Luna Lima and Ryan Kent going step for step 
trying to grab that final podium spot. There are some massive point differences between second, third, fourth, and fifth place. You need to get that spot. You cannot give that up to a rival. Yeah, and that's a position where Ryan Kent doesn't even really have to push as hard as some of the other guys because he knows with the sandbag coming up, he outweighs Johnny Lumelina by about 40 pounds, and it's all muscle. Once he gets onto that sandbag carry, he's going to be able to pull away. And you see the power hike right now. Sometimes you wonder, why are these athletes walking? They're doing it because it's the laws of diminishing returns. Sometimes running something doesn't necessarily make you faster, or if it does make you a second or two faster, it may drain you 10 seconds later in the race. You need to conserve energy for tactical, useful moments. And that comes with so much of veteran experience, knowing when to push and when not, knowing how far you could go without blowing up as Ryan Atkins is trying to blow up VJ Jones going up this hill. And VJ is going to do his best just to maintain the exact gap that there is right now or close it. What he doesn't want to see is a significant five to 10 second gap form. He needs to stay on Ryan, and in all likelihood, he needs to be five to 10 seconds ahead of Ryan when they make it to the Hercules hoist because he's got a weight disadvantage there and it's one of Ryan's best obstacles. And he just made up a gap to do that. If you notice, he ran with the sandbag to keep himself in position a few times and now he's right on Ryan Atkins' tail as they come down the hill. VJ Jones is gonna have to turn himself inside out if he wants to maintain his chance to win this race. Who would have expected VJ Jones to push Ryan Atkins on a sandbag carry like this? And did you see that little savvy vet move by Atkins? Jones was actually trying to make a pass on the left-hand side, and Atkins stepped in front of him and made him break his momentum just a little bit. And now he's going to be a second or two ahead as he dumps this bag and heads into the rope climb. It's kind of like if you're driving down the highway and you brake on somebody or swerve a little bit, all of a sudden, VJ had to put on the brakes too. As he's putting on the brakes, Ryan Atkins is accelerating away. Now, we are only about 500 meters from the end of this entire race. We've got a rope climb, a Herc hoist, a multi-rig, and that nasty... Uh, multi-rig. Yeah, that nasty multi-rig is going to be a heck of a thing. The cargo net too at the end, that one that's done so much havoc over the course of this season, but this... Ryan Atkins, VJ Jones, neck and neck to the top of the rope climb, off the rope climb at the same time, and into the Hercules hoist. A massive advantage here for Ryan Atkins. As strong as VJ has gotten in this sport, Ryan Atkins is still much stronger in the upper body and a complete ace on the Herc hoist. Now, I want to point out something about the technique, and I learned this just today from Ryan Woods. When you watch Ryan Atkins do this hoist, he'll come up quicker, but it's his the way he releases the rope is actually faster than anyone else in the sport. He lets it slide through his hands and catches it just before it hits the ground because the rule is the rope, once the bag reaches the top, the rope must be under control as the bag hits the ground. You cannot drop the bag. So watch as he gets to the top so quickly. He's up. That descent with the bag, he just lets it slide through his fingers and he snags it right before the end. He's now got five or six seconds of lead and he's going to sprint down this hill. Sprinting away like he's leaving a crime scene and he needs to get to that rig as fast as he possibly can. This is the last open stretch of running in the entire race. Ryan Atkins is going to leave it every with everything he's got out here in this section as he heads into the multi-rig and the race is his if he gets through this multi-rig clean. And if VJ Jones wants to make a push, he's going to have to take a risk. But he's going to have to run superhuman fast at this point because Ryan Atkins is flying heading into the final available obstacle of this day. And now he just pulled that entire Hercules hoist up using all the upper body muscles that he's going to have to use on this rig. He's up onto the rig and you can see that behind him, VJ Jones is hitting it only five seconds behind and right now it's still any man's race. Can Ryan Atkins come through clean? Can VJ Jones catch him? It's just the A-frame cargo net now. It was just too much hesitation on the multi-rig. Now if he could get through this very sloppy, slacked A-frame, he's going to be able to make it, but it's going to be hard. This is giving away as much energy as he's putting in. VJ Jones making one final push, but it looks like today it's going to be Ryan Atkins as he wants one roll over the top. Now two. Can VJ Jones close the gap? I don't think so. This is Ryan Atkins day. Race three in the US National Series is gonna go to him. Ryan Atkins, your champion and your new leader in the US National Series. And VJ Jones, we gotta give him credit. He came back from 30 burpees and pushed one of the top men in the world. And he knows he's got a smile on his face. He's going to hit this fire jump and celebrate with Atkins at the finish. And I got to say, one heroic performance out of VJ Jones. And Atkins, 
he may have held back a little bit in the middle when he was all alone, but he gave everything in that last couple miles once VJ caught him. That was one heck of a finish. He's gassed now, and the time at the finish isn't going to represent how close that race was, because VJ kind of hung out at the A-frame afterwards <laughs> and put his hands up and said, I did everything I could, but today was just Ryan Atkins' day. And this is two things. One, the first time that Ryan Atkins has seized first place in this U.S. National Series, and two, the first time that VJ Jones has been defeated in this 2019 season, as we have a battle for third place right now. This is Ryan Kent finishing off the Herc Hoist just ahead of Johnny Luna Lima. This is the best race of Luna's career at this point, Luna Lima's career, as Ryan Kent is trying to solidify that third place podium finish after his 30 burpees. He must have really put it down in that sandbag carry because he got through that Hercoist almost at the same time Johnny was coming in. And now you get to see Lindsay going through the same brush that her husband Ryan Atkins did earlier, and it doesn't look any better for her either. It looks just as nasty as she's trying to go ahead run away from the field and solidify her grasp on this U.S. National Series. Even if she wins this race, if Nicole manages to hold on to second, she will still be trailing in the U.S. National Series, but going into her favorite thing, the mountains. I'm sorry, my heart rate is still through my throat. <laughs> right, it's, it's, this, my chest is pounding after watching this men's race. This isn't over yet. Going. It's no. not over yet. Luna Lima going to make one final push, see if he can track Ryan Kent down. He's still only seconds behind as Kent has now arrived at the multi-rig. And only momentary laps until we see Johnny Luna Lima. This is seven, eight, nine seconds to the gap. So Ryan still has to be perfect through this multi -rate. Anything could happen right here. He doesn't pass it. Whoa, he just slipped. He recovered, though. Almost Ryan disaster. Kent. Ryan Kent's going to make his way into that A-frame cargo net. And every athlete here knows time to go up the middle of this thing. I'm not taking any chances this year with any pen time penalties. This is Ryan Kent making his way into a third place finish here in Seattle, Snohomish, Washington for the third race of the U.S. National Series. Valuable points and Kent has solidified himself as a top three contender in the National Series this year. An enormous effort after again, like VJ Jones doing 30 burpees. Now all he has to do is jump that fire and go celebrate. He pumps his fist almost as hard as he did when he won this race last in year. In the last three years, Kent has gone first, second, and third on this course. He certainly races well here as he does today with a third place finish. Herculean effort. And, and props to Johnny Luna Lima, man. This is quite a race for him as well. He's managed to pull a fourth place finish. I think it's his best finish in a national series event. And he's proven that he belongs up here with the big boys. Absolutely. The former US national team soccer player just showed that he belongs with the best in Spartan. And Alyssa Hawley right here, she's a local Washington born and bred athlete looking to do her best to reel in a podium position. She's also been on the podium here the last couple years. And Tyler Veerman just claimed at the top of the A-frame, coming in with Mark Battress pushing him, but he's going to be fifth today in his best finish at the U.S. National Series race. And Veerman has quietly put together a very solid top five kind of year here in the National Series in his first serious year of racing. He emerged last year, and he's showing that he is indeed no fluke. Oh, and he understands it. He is pumped right now. Ryan Atkins taking first place in the National Series race, followed by VJ Jones, Ryan Kent, Johnny Luna Lima, and Tyler Veerman. Now let's go down to Steve Hammond with our winner. Well, thanks, guys. I'm here with today's winner from a miserably brilliant Seattle race. Just describe it out there, Ryan Atkins. It was cold, wet, slippery, wild ride. That's awesome. So uh, you had to use a bit of obscure efficiency on this course. What went through your mind when you started seeing people fall off left, right, and center? Well, as soon as I started seeing people fall, it became, it went from going through the obstacles as fast as possible to just making sure I got through them cleanly and not ma making any mistakes. Well, congratulations. You obviously like epic conditions. We're going to Big Bear next. I bet you can't wait for that one. Oh, I can't wait for the hills. It's going to be great. Awesome stuff. Well, here's today's winner. Back to you guys. Thank you, Steve. And Ryan Atkins, of course, excited about the mountains. This is not even yet his ideal terrain. and He's managed second, second, and first in the first three races. Everyone else in this national series is terrified, as is Nicole Miracle right now as she watches Lindsay Webster pull away from her and her chances of stealing this series fade. And a quick thing to just go back to Atkins, it shows how cold it is. He does not have a speech impediment. He could barely talk and articulate his words because it was so cold. An athlete who does not do great in the cold 
Rhea Coble managing to hold herself together today. That jacket certainly doing its job right now, and I think she's learned a couple extra tricks. We've seen her freeze herself out of races on courses before, such as Tahoe at the World Championships in past years. She is certainly running stronger in the cold today. She was pulled off a course in late November last year because she blacked out on, on course. It seems like she's worked through those things, and if you notice, she has those neoprene gloves back on her hands, trying to warm them up for the obstacles to come. Now it's Lindsey Webster again, all out in front. She's your two-time defending world champion. She's your three-time defending national series champion. And behind her, the big race is right here between Rhea Coble and Alyssa Hawley for third position. And here's Alyssa Hawley again, not giving in. She did those 30 burpees at the Twister, and now she's right back on Rhea's heels. Two athletes that have completely transformed themselves. One. A Slovenian gymnast who turned herself into an ultra marathoner and then Spartan athlete. As you see, a huge pass from Melissa Hawley, the athlete who was a CrossFit, avid CrossFitter, who has become a runner because it's necessity in this sport. You need to become a great runner. She was a collegiate soft player, softball player at Stony Brook in Long Island, and then all of a sudden decided, hey, I want to try something called the Spartan race. Came out, did really well, goes out in her next race and beat, at the time, one of the world ranked people, Rose Wetzel. And you're seeing right now how gritty and tough and nasty this course can be and exactly how gritty and tough and nasty these athletes are as well as Alyssa Hawley is just going fiercely through this brush ahead of Rhea Coble. She's made that significant pass right here. She knows she's got a gapper if she's going to hold her off on this trail run. You know, it's funny. We were just talking about softball. She just went through those bushes like she was going through a catcher at home plate. And this is Bender right here. Beater. Excuse me. Yes, thank you. This is Beater right here. And no problem for Lindsay Webster. She's doing a one-handed match technique. She's made it through. And now there's only a few major failable obstacles between her and the finish line. For the viewers at home, it is not supposed to look that easy. So many athletes will fail that obstacle today, and she just did that with relative ease. Rhea Coble is going to need to keep the pressure on right now to hold that gap with Alyssa Hawley. She cannot let her get away. She knows how good Alyssa is at obstacles towards the end of races. And with Alyssa having already failed an obstacle and getting that lead back, it's an impressive run by her today, no question. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I'm really impressed with Rhea right now. She's seeming to show some patience. Even though Alyssa just passed her and got away a little bit, it doesn't look like she's trying to rush. She's staying within herself. You can notice that because she's not falling over. If you're running too hard right now, you would fall flat in your face like Ryan Kent did earlier. And if you just saw that other arm pop in, that was one of our cameramen who's running right with her. It does look like fun, though, doesn't it? You're going through about knee-to-waist-deep water in sections and then back out and into the technical trail running, and they're going to head into the back end of this course where things are going to get nasty. It's going to become not just wet but muddy through this next section of technical terrain. I mean, if people are asking, why would these athletes, and she almost slips and falls again. That's the same spot that Ryan Kent fell. It is. Subject themselves to such punishment and such harsh conditions. Athletes love the adventure, and it's just not the pro athletes you're watching right now. It is the everyday person that is going to be on this course today that gets out there and enjoys the race because they want to have that adventure in their lives. But there are very few athletes out there that run a course like this. With this kind of speed, this kind of intensity, this kind of aggression out there, it's a lot of risk-taking, and it's an incredibly difficult sport on the mind and on the body to maintain your health and your fitness through an entire season. Most people will take them all day to do this course. And what you're going to see is every month or so, we have another race in the U.S. National Series as we work our way through this five-race series. And it is, of course, all five races required in order to, to take the victory in the overall series. You're going to need to show up and score well in all five races each one becoming progressively more challenging in terms of terrain, and we have a longer race, the next one in Big Bear. Yeah, and it's kind of a catch-22. You could miss an obstacle that costs you the entire series, or you could miss a few and have a bad day and still be able to fight your way back in because other people make mistakes as well. So it's literally the act of attrition that runs the entire course of the U.S. series through those five races that dominates who's going to be the champion. Every race counts and every place counts right now with these big point gaps that they put between first and fifth place before they start to really drop things off a little bit. The other thing to note is while these trail races look incredible, Spartan Trail is also a thing that has emerged this year. They did a few test runs of it last year and at any Spartan race event that you go to, there might be an opportunity for you to register for a Spartan Trail race as well. 
They're going to have some of the best trail racers in the world coming out and doing some of these. Charlie Angle has put them together. Dean Carnassus is coming out to support as well as Scott Jurek. So if you're a trail running fanatic, you'll have an opportunity to possibly meet some of those guys there, run these races. There is prize money up for grabs as well. And the difference between Spartan Trail and a Spartan race is the Spartan Trail has no obstacles. But still, amazing trail running conditions, beautiful terrain. I ran the first one actually in Virginia, I loved it. And here is Rhea approaching the stairway to Sparta, which is a slanted wall that you have to jump to the top of it and then climb up a lattice structure. Not something these athletes are going to fail, but it's going to drain them. And this is Helix right here. Lindsay Webster trying to make her way through Helix, which is slippery. That's plexiglass right there. And with all the mud on it, as well as the cold hands, the cold bars, this can be a tricky one. They're not allowed to touch the top of the structure or for their feet to touch the ground. Yeah, not something that necessarily that they're going to fail, but with this will tax their grip as they're coming into the monkey bars next. So it's really important to be efficient there because now she has to go across that very difficult monkey bars we saw the men do where Ryan, Ryan Kempson. Kempson failed. Yes, and, and listen, if, if you see Ryan Kempson fail an obstacle like monkey bars, it means that there is incredibly slick. It's aluminum, but it's if it's wet, it's just it just becomes very slippery. And they've and also had the sloppy men's hands on it before they've gotten there. These conditions are most likely worse. A little bit of extra mud on there, and Lindsay needs to be cautious at this moment. She cannot allow herself to have a lapse in concentration. One of the keys to this is to move through and maintain your momentum, and she just chicken-winged it because she stopped the momentum. It looks like her grip is hurting then if she's already chicken-winging. Yeah, she's in trouble. These yeah, gaps she, now are big. She must be struggling tremendously on this obstacle right here. That's a tough transition, and Lindsay Webster has just failed on the monkey bars. You could see it coming, and now she's got to knock out these 30 burpees. She had a very solid gap. And she just opened the door for Nicole Miracle, who is an incredible athlete on the monkey bars. And here she, she comes. comes into the helix. Nicole Miracle with an opportunity to steal this race back. Not just the race, but the entire series could be hers because if she manages to win this one, she could play second in the next two races and win the entire series. This would take so much pressure off her. And now imagine what's going through Lindsey Webster's mind. I just dominated this race the whole time and I just failed a simple obstacle like monkey bars and I'm gonna let her back in the race? With the best grip strength athlete there and the person that could most likely take thousands of dollars out of her pocket at the end of the series. So smooth. Nicole Merkel, she just took a glance over, saw Lindsay doing the burpees, did a hot breath on her hands. She's gonna get prepped to try and make a big pass here. Yeah. Now, here's the thing we have to think about. Is she gonna take her time here or is she gonna hammer through so she could create a gap on Lindsay after this? If she takes too much time, she might be able to do the monkey bars and still have Lindsay run away from her. So we're gonna have to see the strategy here. Now, Nicole knows that Lindsay is going to be gassed when she finishes those 30 burpees because Lindsay is now sprinting them out of fear that Nicole's about to pass her. It looks like she's taking her time, though. Trying to get the heat back into her hands, shaking out those arms, trying to get some of the lactic acid out before she even makes the attempt. Oh, man, if you are Lindsay Webster right now, you are nervous. And this is one of the best climbers in the sport. Nicole Miracle with that reverse grip. She's down. I don't know what happened. I don't know how that happened, but Lindsay Webster has finished her burpees. She's off and running, and Nicole Miracle, she's got 30. It's looking like a tough time for her to catch Lindsay today, and Lindsay is thrilled. I am shocked. That is the first obstacle she has failed all season, other than the spear week one in California, and here she goes in the most important spot, fails one of the obstacles that she normally dominates. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and today it looks like Lindsay Webster just got very very lucky because Nicole Miracle had that opportunity to steal the race, to steal the series right there, and she did not seize it. And Lindsay Webster just made that obstacle subtly look very easy. It is tough. They have to, it's called uh, Vertical Cargo 2.0. They have to boost themselves up onto this platform, but underneath there is no wall, so your legs swing underneath it. She swung her leg up and got it over there with ease. and again added more valuable time. She actually did that faster than her husband Ryan Atkins who who messed up on his first attempt when he had it. Now Nicole Merkel is going to have to knock out her 30 burpees and hope that there isn't an athlete chasing her right now as this is Faye Stenning working her way across Benner and that's another failure for Faye Stenning and her tough season continues. Again, it just shows how well Lindsay Webster did that obstacles. Another top athlete, Faye Stenning, couldn't even get across the first rotating beater part of that. Lindsay Webster just 
getting that heart rate under control and back up to speed as she enters the last technical trail running section of this course. And essentially, she's going into an obstacle after this hill that in the sandbag, again, that she is very, very adequate at. And then the obstacles after that are things that she's mastered over the years. So she's in her wheelhouse right now. She just has to make sure that she takes her time and doesn't make a mistake. If you're just joining us, this is the end of the third race in the Spartan U.S. National Women's Series now. Nicole Miracle trying to hold on to that second position. Not going to be able to catch Lindsay Webster for first, but what we've seen is a series has opened up, and now the, the gap has closed between first and second place in the overall series. Three races in, and the, the gap is now paper thin between Nicole Miracle and Lindsay Webster. And as devastating as that fall was and not being able to take the lead there, she still knows that she has to maintain that second place. So she cannot make any more mistakes and give it up. And here she comes again to that precarious ball. Whoop, and there she goes. And you can she see how challenging, it's like the old sternum checker obstacles they have in the military. Getting your chest and your elbows over the top, getting up to your armpits is one of the keys for doing this obstacle well and doing it right. And when you're gassed out and your legs are tired, it can be very hard. That's three failures already trying to get up it. It to make, takes a tremendous amount of upper body pushing strength to get up there. And if you're wondering why she just doesn't throw all her arms over there, that is slick. It's very hard to get, but she just gets her hips over. Once and if you could grab chest it. and hips, that's the key. It. And she's rolled over the top. So for Nicole, a sigh of relief knowing, OK, this is one more out of the way. She's got about five obstacles to go, and she can lock up that second place point. Yeah, there will be some athletes today that cannot get over that one obstacle, and it will disqualify her from the race. It is not as easy as it looks. What we have going behind her is a massive race for third position. Rhea Coble and Alyssa Hawley are going to come down to the wire, battling it out, trying to seize those final critical points. And whichever one of them takes those points, it may determine how the end of this season shakes out for them. Every single place is important. And with Faye falling off that beater again, she's trying to work her way back into that top five and just did herself a huge disservice by falling off that beater. Faye is having a very interesting season because in terms of pure fitness, she's there, but she has not put it together. She has not been racing clean, and she's not running at her peak potential. But Lindsay Webster looks like she's just coming into her element right now as she hits these nasty climbs. It also shows the depth of the women's field. Back in the day, ladies could have been able to do 60, 90 burpees and still run away with races if they had the fitness and the speed. Now the gaps are so closed between these phenomenal athletes on both the men's and the women's side that if you make any mistakes, it's putting you way behind the eight ball. So as Lindsay makes her way out of the final significant climb of this race, all she's going to have left from here is a descent, some sandbag, rope climb, multi rig, oh, excuse me, her hoist, multi rig, and the cargo net. So she is looking good and feeling good as Nicole Miracle is now trying to hold her second place position. And as we saw with Ryan Kent, Ryan Atkins, and VJ Jones, every single one of them had to take that multi-rig conservatively. So it is still not over, and Nicole knows that there's still a chance for her to work her way back in, but they have to be very careful. And if you missed it, the men's race, Ryan Atkins did manage to win today's race, defeating VJ Jones for the first time that he has lost a race this year. It took 30 burpees from VJ to do it, but VJ Jones taking second place, Ryan Kent with 30 burpees, still managing to eke out third position, followed by Johnny Luna Lima and Tyler Veerman. But here is your women's leader, Lindsey Webster, running away from the field. And uh, that's the beauty of this sport is anything could happen on any given day. It's kind of like it's kind of like Daytona. It doesn't matter how fast your car is, how well you're driving, how good your crew pit is. Any little mistake could put you in a wall and wreck your season. And as Lindsey Webster heads into this little kicker right here at the top of it, the sandbag carry. She'll pick it up. It's the last time she has to go up any kind of hill for the rest of the day. She could be flattened downhill the rest of the way. as Nicole Miracle is now putting it on a little bit faster because she knows if she gets in position and Lindsay does make a mistake on that multi-rig, she could steal this race right at the end. It is not over. It is just one obstacle between them in terms of time gap. It was probably about a minute 40 between them when Lindsay first failed that obstacle back at the monkey bars. But the question is, did Lindsay's sense of urgency on those burpees also give her a bit of an advantage over Nicole, who I think 
acknowledges and realizes that she lost her best chance to steal this race right there. Did she get through her burpees fast enough that if Lindsay were to make a mistake, she still has a chance to steal it? Or is she just holding on to second? Right now, she's got to get through this last steep, nasty climb, and then the push is on to the finish. Yeah, the adrenaline release she must have got from the massive relief of Lindsay falling, of, pardon me, Nicole falling off there, must have certainly given her a boost, but it's still pretty stressful knowing that you just did 30 burpees and you still had these strength obstacles coming after it. And you can see just how gritty and nasty this last little climb is. The power hike has transitioned back to run, and you're gonna see her run every step of the rest of this course, maybe with the exception of the sandbag, as Lindsay Webster just basically on damage control at this point. Yeah, right now it's almost, for her, this is almost like a recovery sandbag carry. Trying to get some of the energy back after those 30 burpees in that hill and make sure she goes into that rope climb, her coist. And now we have Rhea coming up to this box and let's watch her attack this. This backwards technique over the top, very slick. Very, the gymnast in her getting up and over. And I think for her, less effort to do that than to try and chicken wing and muscle up over the top. Even the French judge would have given her a 10 on that one. Great job. So one more roll over the top, and for if you've never done this obstacle and rolled the top, it's actually less energy expended to roll, and it seems scary, but it's actually smoother to do that than it is to try and hike one leg over the top and gradually crawl down the other side. It's faster, and you'll find it to be not just more efficient, but less scary. Okay, here's the question. In the next race we do, let's see how many other athletes try that technique, because that was amazing. Oh, the, on the box? Of yeah. course. Yeah, I don't think too many people are going to be doing that move. But hey, if you want to try it, Kev. I, I, I might give it a shot. Lindsay Webster is wrapping up the descent of this sandbag carry. And now it's just a rope climb and a multi-rig and a hercoist between her and the end of this race. And just to give some of uh, the viewers a, a little bit of history into this course, into, this, uh, into what Spartan Race is, the rope climb was something routinely that the ladies would fail. Maybe half of them could be able to get this. They have now made this obstacle routine. You know, you can see the gap now. We now know, as you see Nicole Miracle arriving at the sandbag as Lindsay Webster left it, you'll get a good sense of exactly what that time gap is when she finishes it. But by the time she's done with this sandbag carry, Lindsay Webster's going to be at the multi-rig. She's putting on such a good gap now. If you're watching her, she's J-hooking with her feet. She's using her feet to cinch that rope so she could go up and hit the bell and use as little bound as her arms as possible. She's using her legs to climb yes, that rope. Yes, that's so important because think she's going to this multi-rig now that's going to be almost exclusively an upper body obstacle. So that was a very efficient technique that she had planned out and just shows the savvy veteran in her how to link these obstacles together and make sure she's using as little energy as possible in the upper body. And right now, you can tell she's laboring. She's worked very hard today. It's not just the tempo that they throw down that's hard. Even not running at max speed on this terrain is draining. It's the suction of that mud trying to pull your shoes off, trying to weigh your legs down. It's the undulation of that terrain and the difficulty that it puts your hips and your calves under. And now she knows I've only got flat ground and downhill from here. I can get onto that gravel and hit the road finally for that kick home. When they hit the road, it's going to feel like they're going 90 miles an hour because it'll actually be the fastest that they'll be able to run all day long. It's going to be such a thrill for them. She's one pull from the top, and she's there. As long as she lowers this bag under control and doesn't drop it, she will not get a penalty. And Lindsay Webster is now one failable obstacle away from seizing this race today and moving just another step closer to her fourth U.S. National Series title. And just to remind everyone watching, this race was so important for her because the other two races that are coming up after this are in the mountains where she is absolutely dominant. She does excel in the mountains. It's big for her. It was big for Nicole to try and mitigate that damage and steal another win. And for Nicole, she now has to hold on to this second place position because she needs every point she can get if she's going to hold off Lindsay Webster in the final two races. And as dominant as she was in the first two races, Getting beat here on a course, and we say getting beat, it's not over yet. That rig is still going to be very tough, but if Lindsay's able to hold on here at the rig and win, it puts so much pressure on Nicole. Now, Lindsay may have to go with the chicken wing technique. We saw her hands struggling on the monkey bars earlier. She'll do with a, a grip and match technique, see how she matches with one hand, but she may have to chicken wing 
in order to get through these obstacles. You can see she's moved the chicken wing on the pipe, which actually I have not typically seen that much of. Usually it's through the ring itself. It was actually a tremendous transition. She chicken winged from one arm now to she's the other. The now she's chicken winging right through the rings. Not taking any chances. Lindsay Webster has made it safely through the multi-rig, and now it's just one A-frame cargo net and the 300 points that come along with a victory in the U.S. National Series. What most people wouldn't know is that takes a tremendous amount of pectoral strength to be able to pull off. Again, proving that these Spartan athletes have to be so well-rounded just to be able to pull off these techniques when they want to use them. And this is Lindsay Webster, your three-time defending U.S. National Series champion, your two-time defending world champion. Lindsay Webster is gonna come down this A-frame cargo net in first position, claiming first place here in Snohomish, Washington, the third race in the Spartan U.S. National Series, and the 300 points that go along with it. Your champion on the day is Lindsay Webster. And if you want to do the math, her and her husband, Ryan Atkins, both finished second in the first two series races, and both have won today, sharing the podium spot again for the third straight race. So they will stand side by side on the podium for the third straight time. It's pretty incredible, actually. It's almost like they planned it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's scary how often they do that at such a high level. Nicole Miracle, no problem here as she gets that hoist all the way to the top. Notice how she drives her heel through that bar Extends the leg, lets her legs do some of that lifting for her, lets her lower back do some of that lifting for her, saving her arms for the final obstacle of the day, the multi-rig. As well as using her body weight to help pull that rope as well. So it's very efficient technique. And she never looks tired. You know, usually we say that the athlete who wins the race is not the most tired. It's the athlete who finishes second, who left everything out there but still wasn't able to reel in the winner. That's the person who's the most tired. And we're here we have now Rhea Coble in third place at the sandbag carry. She overtook Alyssa Hawley somewhere on that course. And now she's gonna have to climb like crazy because she knows how strong Alyssa Hawley is on these heavy carries. She needs to get up and down this hill with a gap if she intends to hold her off and maintain this third place position. Yes, yeah, somewhere on the monkey bars. It must have happened. That's where she must have gotten her. Now, Nicole Miracle is coming into the multi-rig, the last failable significant obstacle on this course. And again, so comfortable, so smooth, and such a talent when it comes to these grip strength obstacles. Now, the fact that she failed the monkey bar is something that she never does. She never fails the rig. This has to be kind of shaking her confidence a little bit now. So watch for her to quite possibly be a little more conservative change and up also the use that chicken wing. She must change up the technique. There's no way she's going to risk it on a course like this at, at this point in the course. Probably after the pipe. Look, a chicken wing on the pipe again. That's both of them using that same technique. I will say the fact that she threw the front arm up in the chicken wing stopped her momentum and made that a little bit harder. She's going to have to work harder now to get there as she works her way all the way over the pipe, trying to get on that ring. So she's chicken winged on the ring now. She's going to probably chicken wing every single wing the rest of the way. Armpit deep. <laughs> yeah, all the way up to the armpit. This is not a lot of pectoral at this point. This is just hanging all day. And Nicole Miracle has managed to make it to the end of the multi-rig. She's going to take second place in Seattle here in the Spartan U.S. National Series. It's 264 points for her, and you know she is definitely missing those extra 36 points. Those 36 points could be the difference in the entire series as her boyfriend Aaron Newell is cheering her on from underneath the A-frame cargo net. He finished in seventh today with a great effort himself. Nicole Miracle still maintaining her lead. She did enough to maintain first place in the U.S. National Series, but the mountains are looming, Lindsay Webster is lurking, and the question is, does she have enough in the tank to win another one of these races, or can somebody like Rhea Coble do her a favor and win one in the mountains so that she doesn't have to do it? Rhea Coble is a tremendous mountain runner, one of the best climbers in the sport, and she could definitely figure in there and actually work her well out, way up in the points as well. Nicole Miracle will have to settle for second place today because it's Lindsay Webster taking first, and Rhea Coble now trying to hold on to third position as she works her way towards the finish line. Rhea Coble is another one that likes to chicken wing the rings, and for her to be able to get through that obstacle will put her solely in third place 
and really boost her up in the points. And we've got quite a rivalry brewing between these top two women in Nicole Miracle and Lindsay Webster as Rhea Coble still in third position, safely up the rope, two failable obstacles from the end. Using that J-hook just like Lindsay Webster did, trying to save those upper body muscles and then working your way into that multi, into the, pardon me, that Hercoise and hopefully for her, Alyssa Hawley isn't hunting her down because she is one of the best closers in this sport. I don't see Alyssa behind her. I just see Rhea Coble and a lot of daylight, and that is a good sign for her because she still is at risk on this multi-rig. And that multi-rig could be a little bit riskier if she saps herself on this Hercules hoist, so it's very important that she does it energy efficient. And quickly, one of the reasons that people tend to struggle on some of these future obstacles when they get through a Hercules hoist is they hold it for so long, and we've seen this time and time again, that you get jammed up on this obstacle, you try and get yourself through it, and you hold that rope for too long, and your grip strength goes. Yeah, and it's a 60-pound bag that's sopped with water now that probably weighs closer to 80, that you're trying to support with your arms and not let that slip through a very slick rope. Well, Rhea Coble had no problem with this one. Four easy pulls to get it to the top, under control. She's off and running on her way to the finish line. And it looks like Rhea Coble is gonna wrap up that third place position because I don't see Alyssa Hawley anywhere. But right now, we've got Steve Hammond with our winner. Well, I'm here today with Lindsay Webster, today's winner in an incredible, disgusting race. Describe that course for me. Uh, it was so gnarly, but super fun. I mean, I enjoyed it for sure. Um, I was cold the whole time. Usually once you get moving and you're running hard, like, yeah, you don't really feel cold, but I was legitimately frozen and super glad that I brought gloves. <laughs> well, we saw where you really shine today in the wet and mucky weather. Coming on into the mountains now, we've got Big Bear next. You're really looking forward to that race? I'm so excited for that race. The only thing I'm nervous for is the fact that it's so long, because uh, all the races to date have been an hour just so over, and this one's probably going to be two and a half plus, so um, it's time to start doing some like long, hard distance training, I think. Well, go and get warm. You're one gnarly chick. Congratulations today. That was an amazing victory. Back to you guys. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. And Lindsay Webster continues to be dominant year after year. And Rhea Coble, another dominant athlete, taking third place here in the U.S. National Series from Snohomish, Washington. These are huge points for her and a huge confidence boost, Kevin. Yeah, I haven't seen her this excited since she won the North American Regional Championship in West Virginia two years ago. And as is common in Spartan. The camaraderie with the athletes in the sport is second to none. A lot of love and a lot of excitement between friends right now. And what we've seen today, a dominant performance out of Lindsay Webster, reasserting herself as the best female athlete in the world. Nicole Miracle in second, followed by Rhea Coble, Alyssa Hawley, and Faye Stenning managing to sneak into that top five. Yeah, she made her mistakes today, but she was able to hang on and come away with some valuable points. And those points are going to be critical right now because with two races left in the series, she still has a gap to close on Nicole Miracle. There's a 36-point gap that could be made up in one more race. Big Bear, which is a beast, 13 miles long, and an opportunity for her to seize this series back. But right now, Nicole Miracle controls her own destiny. She has to win one more. Ryan Atkins... First place today after two second place finishes. He is in the mix right now with firm control over this series. As you can see, 828 points for him. A huge gap back to Ryan Kempson, Ryan Kent, Kirk DeWitt, and Johnny Luna Lima. It looks like Ryan Atkins' series to lose. Yeah, Johnny Luna Lima had a tremendous race today that really boosted him from below the top 10 right into the mix. A great day of racing out here in Snohomish, Washington for race three of the Spartan U.S. National Series. For Kevin Donahue, Steve Hammond, and the rest of our broadcast team, I'm David Makita. We'll see you on the 18th of May from Big Bear.